Hello guys, greetings, and today I will talk to you about responsive design. Well, it's not really a design, but I will walk you through how to make something responsive in CSS. Like the principle behind it, or mechanism, I guess you can call it. Anyway, as you can see here, I have a grid of images which are from Unsplash. And if I just resize the window for the responsive, as you can see, it's responsive. And now for the fluid, as you can see, it is fluid. And now for the responsive and fluid, it's responsive. And the width is somewhat fluid as well. There you go. The height is responsive in this case. Okay. They're pretty much the same, but there are key differences in responsive design and fluid design. However, of course, it is mostly, or like the two of them are mostly incorporated in websites. Okay, so let I will walk you through the code now and show you what it looks like. Anyway, so finally I used vanilla JavaScript and vanilla HTML. <laughs> and it's actually pretty fun if I just use JavaScript. This is just a simple markup. As you can see, I imported the or rather embedded the link for the style sheet, which is right here. The main style sheet, the style sheet for the uh, responsive and the style sheet for the fluid. And as you can see, I put a script tag, and it's just a simple script to actually embed um, the images inside of our markup. Because as you can see, it is empty, but in the console, it has children. This image section fluid right here has a child of divs, as children of divs, which were um, embedded by JavaScript. So I guess I will walk you through this now pretty quickly. So first, I instantiated a variable called sections. And the value of this is equal to what is returned by this function, which is query selector all. It is built in in JavaScript. And what you pass onto here is pretty much the same as how you define selectors in CSS or how you target elements in CSS. So it can be the HTML tag itself, IDs, classes. As you can see, I use period or attributes and for attributes you can use brackets just like in css so this will return an array and then after that i use the comma so that i can use the const keyword uh, again so that i don't have to repeat myself writing const so it's just a pretty convenient way but that really recommended for long forms of code but anyway I instantiated an, uh, an object, so just I can arrange everything properly. As you can see, it's actually arranged, and you can give this some kind of name to the image, like what kind of image this is, so for more readability. Of course, I got the keys, which I then reiterated over here, image keys. So this is the function object that keys to actually get this variable. And this variable is called keys. I called it variable before, so it's pretty, it pretty much is, but <laughs> it is called a key. Which is a key to this value in this object, which is the value of the variable image paths. Pass. <laughs> okay. And then now, which I just defined the function, which is reusable function. Because I, we will repetitively do this. That's why I put it or embedded it inside the function. This block of code. And it takes three parameters. Source, the source of the image. Alt, the alt for the image for accessibility. And the parent, which is what parent will we append this image to. After that, we have the loop for the sections that we got here which is pretty much the three sections inside of the HTML markup. We have this section, this section, and this section. Oh, additionally, if you noticed, and if you don't know yet, I put defer on the script tag, and I put it inside the head tag. Now, it's alright to put it inside the body and inside the head at the same time. However, if you put a script tag inside of a head tag, right here, head tag, you need to put a defer to it. And this only works if a script tag has an attribute of source. It does not work for inline scripts. 
for inline scripts you should use the you should place this script tag inside of a body tag and of course probably at the end or just below the uh, tags that you will actually target in that inline script really depends on your use for each section I will have all the images that we got in here so all these keys are pretty much image 1, image 2, until image 6. So that means for each section, we will get all the image keys and for it, no, not really get, but I say for each section, we will loop through each image key inside the image keys and then run the function of append image. And then the parameter, the source would be we would be getting it from the variable image paths, which is an object. And to access an object, or to access a key in an object, is you need to pass on an array, and then the string, or rather, the word, or like the exact word for that key. So for example, I passed on the string image1 here, it will return the value of this right here, which is these forward slash assets forward slash image dash one dot jpeg or jpg and as you can see there is actually in still a sense i'm not sure if it's only in my vs code but i've been using typescript a lot so i'm not really too sure if it's typescript but yeah it's actually very useful to do it this way if you're dealing with objects i learned this after like four months of javascript because i mostly focus on html but anyway just so you uh, you know and make your life easier. Of course, the key will be the alt, or it can be the source as well, up to you. And the section is the parent, as you can see over here. So the section is passed here. Uh, you can also use the for loop, but I re it's much more preferable to use the for each loop if you're looping through, let's say, uh, HTML elements. So it's more readable, let's say that for each of this variable and stuff like that. And then in this function is just a simple create a div element and then add a class of image container among its list of classes. And again, create an image tag and the image tag will have the source equal to the passed on source from the parameter and the alt as well. And then append the image tag to the div. After that, append the div as a child to the parent tag passed by the parameter or passed on the parameter. And right now, it's actually working, as you can see right here. Oh, there we go. Class of image container among its list of classes and the child of image with the source and the alt, which is the key right here. Okay, so that's the JavaScript done. So you know how I'm doing this thing and why this is pretty much empty and clean. I really like it this way. That's why I found ways before to... Uh, what do you call this? To actually make my life easier, which made it harder because I didn't know about React and all those frameworks. <laughs> anyway, let's walk. I will now walk you through the first uh, style sheet, which is the main style sheet. So, first, let's go to the root. Now, this colon and then root is a special, let's say, class selector. I don't know what it's called, but it's like, let's say you are. You have a tree and the root is pretty much where everything will come from and it will be supplied to everything down to everything up to its branches trunk to its trunk branches and leaves so it's basically the root of all the styles that will exist in this html markup that's why i put it at the topmost level of the amount of the link tags that i have here and the variable to so this is where we get the variables so if you see um style sheets that have a value for example this right where is it for example this has the var and then the value inside that is how we instantiate variables in css so unlike in javascript we use const let and all those keywords in css we only need to actually put double hyphens or dashes and then after that will be the value variable name so we don't actually need to pass on the hyphen here this is just naming convention so if i do hello aha uh -huh. there we go 
as you can see it's still the same and you can also use camel case is it camel case i think it is yeah and stuff like that always just remember to use um double hyphens so now what do we have here well by the name itself it is the default pixel value which is equal to one rem that is because i will show you um how rem works later on or maybe i will show it to you right now yeah i will show it to you right now after this root part okay so one one rem is equal to 16 pixels in value default by default after that i defined the grid calls and the grid rows but the grid row i didn't really use here but it's pretty much Let's say an imaginary grid just to show you that you can make an imaginary grid without actually making one to make your life easier and actually have uh, actually fulfill the alignment principle in design or visual design if you can check here in figma this is what it will look like so we have the layout grid here at the right part as you can see it has a height of 14 for the rows and a gutter of 7 pixels or these are in pixels as you can see the layout is shown right now and now if i press shift g it's got uh it's gone so this is what it it looks like if you have uh the those variables you can pretend that this exists and you can actually have some kind of a design software like figma or adobe or i'm not sure what you can use besides those but yeah, and then you can follow those, like where do those, where do this box end and stuff like that to have a better, let's say, visual appeal to the website or something like that. <laughs> and the gutters just pretty much the spaces between each grid or each rectangle in this case, like the white space here, those are the gutters. <clears throat> There we go, grid call cutter and grid call size. Now here I just multiplied it pretty much to the pixel value. As you can see var. Okay, one more thing in CSS if you aren't sure. Calc function is pretty much, well, calculate this. It's saying this to uh, CSS to calculate whatever value is inside. So the only allowed values are of course numbers. Or in this case, right here. You cannot pass on different units in CSS, so this means that this is pretty much 2 rem, and then that's 32 pixels, 4 rem, that's, oh, just take note that this is still in pixels, okay, because this unit here is pixels. I'm just saying that this is pretty much 2 rem, 4 rem, and 1.5 rem, just the unit, or the unit, the final value or result will be in pixels, okay and so on and so forth and i just instantiated the normal declaration here or property which is pretty much resetting everything margin zero padding zero and box sizing of border backs to equally distribute all padding and such body just change the background color color text align center and just change the font family also added some kind of padding at the bottom i don't know why it doesn't work padding i should to add two ram here mm. okay Okay, that's pretty weird. Oh, I think it does. Oh, okay, I think it's overflowing. Why is that? Shouldn't this actually... Does it got to do with height? I think it's got to do with height. Yeah, it's got to do with height. As you can see. Hmm. Yeah, height. The height property is very tricky. So, I warn you to use that. I, I, I warn you in using that, rather. But for the sake of this example, let's just use it, although it's overflowing in height. Okay. We need just simple declarations to add some spacing and actually make this look good. Again, just um, centralizing everything. Right here is pretty much the, flip, uh, the gap here. That's the gap. Just so we can see differences and again, make, make this overall website or example look good. Just for the image. You can also remove the max height here and height by, but I prefer it this way. And I tell the image to cover like all the dimensions of its parent container and lose its aspect ratio. Well, so this is the default or the general style for the image sections. As you can see here, there's a class name of image section. 
Okay, now let's get to uh, the responsive one first. So if we check here, it is very responsive. As you can see, it's doing this. Okay, wait. I think I changed it. Oh, okay, wait, wait. Okay, there we go. So this is actually what I first implemented when I started out in um, HTML and CSS. But it has a very bad downside, as you can see. And I commented out the one I made for this responsive type. Just pure responsiveness. <laughs> and as you can see, if I zoom out, the whole content zooms out. As you can see, this is zoomed out, zoomed out. And the texts are also zoomed out. However, the images are not. And to solve this, like retaining this kind of uh, responsiveness still is to actually have to give the div uh, well, this the width to whatever you want but in this case I have this here so I'll just give it that <clears throat> there we go so you can see it is solved and when I zoom out it is also zoomed out however with this implementation as you can see is that the uh, the section actually grows there we go like it's still 1fr, 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 like one fraction of the overall width of the container or this, pretty much. This parent container which has the um, display of grid, one fraction of this. So as you can see, if I just open this, this is one third. Why is it called one third if it's one over three? Yeah, I think it's one third, two thirds, and three thirds. Okay, yeah, that's great. <laughs> And we don't actually want that in this case. But I guess you can use this if you want this kind of functionality. However, there's another side to this, which is what I have up here. Let's format that. There we go. So now this actually repeats everything, as you can see. It has a specific width, but it's not 1 and 4, 1 and 4, 1 and 4 anymore. It's just that the width repeats repeatedly so over here if we check the grid template columns has a repeat function so i just call everything that has a parenthesis a function so please take note of that and i'm not sure if this is actually a function anyway <laughs> so the first variable is pretty much like how much would you want this to have like how much uh like one two three would you want this to have pretty much the same as one f r one f r one f r Although I tried it like that, it didn't work. I'm not sure if there's something I need to do. If I say 2FR is still the same. Although what I've seen in other example, other examples is that they actually had this kind of function, like kind of value inside. So I'm not sure why it's not working when you do it like that. However, if you're going to re use repeat anyways, then I recommend to just use autofill as the value here. And it's self-explanatory is that you want to fill all like you want to let the browser decide to fill that specific part of the grid if it fits the criteria criteria which is the width over here or like the value or like the second value there we go so this is the same with grid template rows <clears throat> However, of course, it's pre um, grid template rows are pretty much the same as height, so it's very tricky. Let's just uh, go with width for now, as the browser actually recalculates it with aspect ratio, like the height. It's recalculated using aspect ratio. Anyway, so that's what the repeat um, property does, or function, I don't know what to call it. It takes in how you want the grid to be filled in this case just use autofill if you are using repeat anyway and the value of which you want each uh, each child to have each child of the grid in this case it's excuse me 447 and if we check here grid call size 2 that's 32 times 10 is sadly not that oh never mind here we go times 14 rather so if you go to calculator because i don't know <laughs> 14 times 32 there we go 448 and just very close pretty much just get the uh round off 
Yeah, round of value. So it's 4 for 8. So it is responsive because we have breakpoints. Now that is the thing to note in responsive design. You need to have breakpoints. And these breakpoints are pretty much in CSS media queries. And in this case, we are instantiating that if the screen is an is at 799 pixels. So if you just focus here, there we go, over here, the white bar. The left side is the width, so if we go to 769 pixels, there we go. So you can see it's actually uh decreasing or like increasing or decreasing, depending. Anyway, let's use this dev tools to properly see that actually. Let's go to 769. So the width has increased. But if I go to 766, 68, the width had has decreased. And that width is that width's value is equal to this. So if you just check here, the width is now equal to this. As you can see, okay, I should, I should click this. There we go. But if I go to 769, as you can see, that this is actually slashed out. And this property or declaration appears, which is the media query. And then the uh, element or class selector. And then its properties, which is we want to change the value of its variable grid width. Okay, I forgot to explain this actually, but anything inside, anything that is a variable, like with two hyphens inside of a selector or element, will actually be considered as its variable, local variable. And its scope is actually, well, the element itself and all of its children. If you noticed that I'm actually I actually used it over here. So all the children of which we declared or you declare a local variable like this one here will be accessible to its children. That is what we mean by cascading in cascading style sheets. Now this applies the same way to styles. So if you have uh, a font size of okay, I have an example here actually. There you go. If you have a text aligned of center, all everything in here, all of the children, all the child of the body will have a text aligned of center. So if I change the center to end, there we go. All the texts, texts are now aligned to the end of the document or the browser. There we go. And and at the end. So that's pretty much how um, inheritance work in CSS. And I can dig deeper into that in future videos for now let's focus on this <laughs> anyway as you can see there we go this is responsiveness and i prefer this approach like using repeat if i don't if i want to have more control because it actually changes the width by my will and it autofills without worrying it overflowing when i use grid and it's also one of the reasons why i use this kind of approach in grids so, of course, I also have more control on the grid size compared to having like uh, this kind of stuff. Like grid. There we go. So, this is pretty much the. It, I'm not fully sure, but it's like, as you can see in the description, <laughs> where it starts and where it ends. <laughs> and grid auto. There we go. So, this is. Those are our much more advanced properties of grid, which I forgot because really you can get by and I did by just using this approach. Okay. And as you can see, it's pretty static and it's just responsive based on breakpoints. But what if, let's say, we want it to be fluid, like we want to avoid the possibility of it overflowing like this here. For example, we don't want to worry too much about, uh, let's say, overflows and like pixel perfect stuff because using this method will actually like make you make it possible to be pixel perfect each breakpoint. And we can solve that with fluid design right down here. Now, fluid design pretty much means it is like water, it's fluid. It's very, very responsive in this case. It is that it grows or shrinks pixel by pixel based on your declaration. So if you check here, there we go. It's growing every time I 
are shrinking because you notice very small like there we go it's increasing very slowly because i'm increasing it pixel by pixel and it's decreasing slowly by slowly because i'm decreasing it pixel by pixel and by fast there we go and it stops because i actually set a minimum value here and by the way i am using flexbox for this method because i think it is more usable in flexbox because when you're using fluid you want to avoid overflow issues and with flexbox you can do that and there's overflow because well as you can see the image here is static and it's not resizing anymore or responding to the uh dimension change in this case this one is responding as you can see and you don't have to worry too much about overflows using this and using flexbox if we check there you go it's centralized that's because if you check here this is still being autofilled so we're autofilling this kind of width right here if you can see like 448 so all of the sections are 448 in pixels as you can see there's like some kind of gap here that's the grid doing its work to autofill elements and it is still justified justified to the center as you can see it's like one half and one half it's both equal because this is centralized like all of this is centralized the same thing with this however flexbox is pretty much relying on its content so everything is centralized and it only has five content oh wait I think this is six so it is centralized because there's no other block here or like uh yeah space let's say because this is a space here space here space here which is auto filled by the grid as you can see right here so if you want to avoid this you can use flexbox and to adjust the size in flexbox you can just use uh what do you call this you can use fluid design which pretty much to achieve that is pretty much applying the right here the clamp function or property now clamp is pretty much you're setting okay and let me show you a very simple one you're setting the minimum value right here is the minimum value the first parameter like the first value then after the comma you set, so you separate these values by commas first value is the minimum value so you want it to stop there at this kind of value okay it should be using pixel so and the second one would be your preferred value so this is like the value that you want to declare and of course if it's fluid you actually want it to be dynamic you don't want it to be static like this which i did for a long time that's why i thought clamp was not working on my end <laughs> funnily enough but in this case you want it to be dynamic so you can do 20% of the viewport width or you can do 20% of its parent container for other units that are dynamic like ch and stuff and the third value is its maximum value so where do you want this to stop how big do you want this to get well let's say 32 pixels so we want this to increase pixel by pixel per 20% of the viewport width but we want it to stop at 32 pixels and there's one more thing is you can use scope and i'm sure how this exactly works but i keep using 0.1 pixel right well rem in this case is probably around 4 pixels i think this means is that you want this to increase by 4 pixels by there we go plus by or you want this to increase per there we go per 4 viewport weeks it's for example of the viewport <laughs> per four percent width of the viewport there we go because that's how what clamp is so clamp is mostly used in font sizes but you can also use it in dimensions as you can see what i did here so this is just a minimum value i calculated it right here calc and the maximum value so i pretty much just increased it a little bit so from this i multiplied it by four and this one by ten so you can change this to 8 to actually just double it but I just prefer 10 because why not because this can be any value really as long as as long as it's greater than the minimum value for this to work so if we just, um, check here when we're zooming okay let me zoom in so when we're zooming out it's zooming out uh, perfectly in this case it's not zooming out I mean it's zooming out but you can see the size is still the same there we go well technically it's not because the section is also increasing like the parent container because it's zooming out but in this case this one is increasing there we go until a specific point that is when it stops there we go now it stopped growing right there okay now in here they're pretty much the same stuff but because i can't really think of a good example for post responsive and fluid like in one element 
it's mostly just like this part of like for example uh, this text will be fluid and then this element container will be responsive so i use it that way i don't use it like all in one element not three uh that often but as you can notice i use breakpoints for the height so if you check that out let's see 769 so if you don't know uh 769 is like the i'm not sure though i read this in stack overflow as the standard value for uh mobile screens like the highest i guess for mobile screens anyway so you can see it actually has breakpoints it's responsive based on uh based on the viewport width there we go and it's fluid at the same time if we can check here there we go it's zooming in like the image is zooming in because it has the property of object fit of cover and one thing i forgot is that it has a defined height there we go that's why it's zooming in it has a defined height check over here oh not there there we go there we go the um the div container has a defined height so it's not actually changing but over here it's changing because it is the browser doing its job to retain the aspect ratio of the overall div container. In this case, it's not maintaining its aspect ratio. So, <clears throat> it is following its like static property value of height. That's why it's like this. There you go. One thing to note when using the calc viewport width is that you can play around with it. Well, you should research more about it to actually pinpoint the values properly. But for me, I'm just playing around with it. But the lower the value here, the faster it will grow. Oh, no, no, no. The later it will grow. There we go. And the higher the value, the faster it will grow. So if I say this is 5.5, it's correct. Fully with this. Yeah. Okay, wait. Maybe 2.5. 1.5. Come on. Oh wait, yeah, I think it is indeed growing later. Goodness. <laughs> okay, again. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this in it indeed grows later. <laughs> it's very cool to navigate, really. But just remember that the lower the value, the slower it will reach that point. Of course, that also depends on what you put on the left side or like whichever side, like the value you added to. In this case, it's equal to the grid called of uh, gutter. There's a value of 16 times 1.5 is 24, if I'm not mistaken. So that's 24 pixels increase per 25 viewport width. 25.5 viewport width. And of course, it reached its minimum, which is right here. The grid width is its minimum. Then its maximum is right here, which is where it stopped like uh, zooming in. Then it and that there okay <clears throat> what else did i miss oh all right let me actually remove the height here let's just make it 30 gram because it was overflowing mm. what else did i miss? oh yeah the rem okay so rem values are like recommended to you to be used because if you have uh, been using mobiles a lot well probably are there's um an option in settings where you can change the font size of some sort of your device like its size like when you increase it, you will have bigger icons, bigger texts. It's pretty much what our grandmothers use or pretty much those with bad eyesight use. It's what I use as well. 